This is 78-year-old John Hawkins, New York psychotherapist, once an avid gardener, near death from lung disease, and seemingly at peace. Each time I would come into the apartment, I would give John a hug and a kiss, you know, and welcome him and not shy away from the physical state that he was in. Hawkins let photographer Joshua Bright take pictures of his last days on Earth, at home, in hospice care. Bright was hoping for insight into one big question, what is a good death? But he admits that being there to see it wasn't easy. Being around uh, a, just, just a human being that's dying um, was tough. And, it, and there's part of me that wanted to, to recoil. You had a, a very close friendship with this person. So when Joshua Bright shows up and says, oh, I want to come in and take pictures, um, what was your initial reaction? I thought it was great. You I did? It, I thought it was great. I knew that John would love it. Robert Choto Campbell was John Hawkins' dear friend of 25 years. John was uh, in his earlier life a theater major, so he was always on stage, as it were. Mm -hmm. I knew they would love it. I knew they would get along. And um, from the moment they met each other, it was, it was almost like a love story. The chemistry may have been helped by the setting. Not an impersonal hospital, but John's home, where he felt most comfortable. If you can have a quiet death or a death with your loved ones around you, then it can really be peaceful and beautiful and meaningful. A good death may sound like a contradiction in terms, but the vast majority of Americans, 70% in one poll, do agree that if they are going to die, they would like to die at home. Yet only one in four actually does. People want to die with their families around them, and I think sometimes it's hard to do that in an intensive care unit. Dr. Jessica Zitter sees it firsthand. She works in the ICU at Highland Hospital in Oakland, California. There's always something physiologically that we can tweak with our ventilators, with our dialysis machines, with our blood pressure support medications. And so we focus on doing those things to improve that physiology. And not on the whole person. Right, we're not trained to think that way. As a physician, it is the most wrenching experience to have done what you could for a person, become close with their family, and have it not work out. Dr. Peter Bach at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City agrees doctors sometimes over-treat in hopeless cases. But doctors, he points out, aren't clairvoyant. People are not walking around with a sign on their forehead saying, in three months I'm going to be dead. They're walking around with medical charts saying, I have a serious problem. Our jobs, so look at that and say, is there something I can do which will change that. Also part of the job, Dr. Zitter believes, is being candid with patients, giving them the information they need to make the hard decisions. We all need to do better, and I really, I could tell you story after story of things that I have done that I have not been proud of. Not talking to a family clearly, not wanting to be the bearer of bad news. There are many times I can tell you that I have done that, and I regret it. For John Hawkins, there seemed to be no regrets. The last time he was hospitalized, he had gone into a nursing rehab for about eight weeks, and he said, I can't keep doing this. Hawkins decided to forego treatment, but he did not stop living. We got him to start writing his memoir. We were able to fill his room with flowers. There's classical music playing 24-7. He had his cats. Hardly the first time Robert Chodo Campbell has comforted a terminal patient. A Buddhist monk, he co-founded the New York Zen Center for Contemplative Care, working with hospitals to teach medical professionals how to deal with the dying. I don't aspire to or subscribe to heaven and hell and God, but I can tell you at the moment of a person's passing, Something very mysterious happens. Something leaves that room, and I know each time that there's something much greater than me occurring in this room, much greater than the two of us. 
Campbell was there when his dear friend John Hawkins died on January 9, 2013, a year and a half since Hawkins first met Joshua Bright. Bright's photo series in the New York Times was called simply a good death. John's story is, in a sense, the story of any person. Unfortunately, a lot of people do experience much more difficult and more tragic deaths. I remember having almost my final conversation with him a couple of days before he died saying, John, I think you're very close. And he said, yeah, I am. I think he had a good death.